of my favorite and least favorite albums of 2022 so far. It's kind of the midpoint of the year, so I thought I would do this video. I'm not gonna be ranking them in order. I'm just gonna be naming them in this video, so don't expect like a definitive top 10 list. So uh, yeah, let's start out with the worst albums of the year, the ones that made my ears bleed, the ones that made me want to never listen to music again, starting it off with MGK's mainstream sellout. You can see that handsome fella back here. This album was absolutely awful. If you guys haven't seen my reaction to it, go check that out. It just made me want to die, literally. The pop punk sound that MGK has been doing is absolutely awful. The lyrics are vapid. There's nothing there lyrically. There's really barely anything musically. The only reason this, this album is somewhat in the slightest bit redeemable is the instrumentals um, but MGK singing is awful overall it's just an awful project it's generic it's boring and it's uh, intolerable next up we have come home the kids miss you by Jack Harlow this album is another absolute snooze fest it's not as bad as mainstream sellout but it's pretty close the writing is pretty awful there's some questionable bars like that semen bar in first class there's just a lot of weak writing a lot of pretty weak beats and the features are pretty weak as well the pharrell beat is absolutely awful um overall just a not very memorable project at all pretty bland pretty generic as i said in my community post review this album is rap music for people who don't like rap uh, and here we go we have post malone's 12 carat toothache this might actually be my least favorite album of the year it's between this and mgk's album this thing sounds absolutely awful the sound is atrocious everything is just soaked in so much reverb to the point where it's not even listenable post malone's deeper writing comes across as forced to me and i just don't really buy it at all there's a couple tracks that are okay i guess uh, but for the most part, this album is completely unlikable, unlistenable garbage. All right, now we're getting to the good albums. The first good album we have here is 070 Shake with You Can't Kill Me. This is the first album I've listened to from this artist. Obviously, she was on Ghost Town by Kanye West. Um, that's where I know her from, obviously. She's really good. She's really good. This is a really atmospheric, synthy, ethereal, enveloping project. I love the production on this. I love the writing. And I just love the overall atmosphere and feel of this project. It hooks you in right from the first track. Uh, Mike Dean kills it with the synth production on this. It's kind of what I expected from a 070 Shake project, but it's pretty impressive. There's a couple tracks where the, the synths get a little bit overwhelming, but if you love synths and you love kind of atmospheric stuff and some, some good production, there's some hip hop elements in there as well. Um, you'll definitely love this project and I definitely did. Next up we have Who Cares by Rex Orange County. I liked this album a lot better than Pony. Um, I think it's a lot more of a raw album lyrically and I love the sound of this album a lot more too. A lot of these tracks just feel like kind of like journal entries from Rex Orange County, super vulnerable, honest, um, but there's some fun moments as well and I just love the sound of this project. Rex has a great voice, I love the bass lines, I love the drums, I love the strings on this album, the instrumentation overall. While it is pretty consistent and it stays pretty much the same throughout the entire project, it doesn't really get old. So yeah, this is a great project from Rex. I'm excited to see what he has to offer next. Next up, we have Crash by Charlie XCX. This was my introduction to Charlie XCX. Um, I know this is a little bit more mainstream compared to her earlier albums, which I haven't listened to yet, but I think she does this mainstream pop sound pretty well. There's some 80s influence um, in there that goes over pretty well as well. There's a couple tracks that I'm not the biggest fan of, like Lightning, but for the most part, this is a really fun, catchy, um, album by Charlie XCX. I definitely want to check out some of her earlier stuff because I'm interested to see how that compares to this, but for what this is, it's pretty solid. Next up, we have Atheops, I think it's how you pronounce it, by Billy Woods. This is also my introduction to Billy Woods. I've been listening to a lot of new artists this year. Some abstract hip-hop here with some great lyrical moments, some great writing, a lot of depth in the writing in this project, um, but the production is really what grabbed my ear initially on this project. It just feels super dirty, experimental, dark, um, and it's just really interesting production overall. I really like Billy Wood's voice and his presence on the mic as well. Um, so yeah, this is a really good abstract hip hop record. Next up, we have Melt My Eyes Here, Future by Denzel Curry. I've been a big fan of Denzel Curry for a while now, and uh, this project delivered definitely i love the a lot of different styles of music on this album you got some jazz instrumentation you got some more trap bangers as well um, but really what this album comes down to is the lyrical content from denzel curry he really dives into therapy mental health 
Um, it's a really introspective record. I mean, he's wrote about this kind of stuff before, but never this in depth. And really, it, this album just speaks growth to me. So yeah, there's a lot of great writing on here, a lot of great beats. Ain't No Way is probably one of my favorite tracks of the year. It might be my favorite track of the year. The features on that track absolutely are insane. Overall, this is a really good project from Denzel. He just proves to be one of the most consistent rappers in the game right now. Next up, we have Mahal by Toro I Moi. I think it's how you pronounce it. This is the first time I've listened to this guy as well. I love just the energy of this project. It just feels super bright and uplifting. A lot of the writing is pretty simple, but it goes over super well. I love his presence on the mic. I love the production on this. It's got some like funkiness to it some soul some r&b it has a i feel like it has a really wide array of sounds to it but overall it comes together in this really bright colorful fun kind of summer fitting package so yeah this was a really fun project from toro y moi all right next up we have a light for attracting attention by the smile this is a couple of the members of radiohead formed this band and yeah i didn't love this project right when it came out but it's grown on me quite a bit it feels like, some of it feels like stuff you'd hear on Hail to the Thief. Some of it feels like stuff you hear on a moon-shaped pool. Overall, it feels kind of just like another Radiohead album, but that's in no way bad. It's, it's really good. It's grown on me a lot. There's a couple tracks on here that I absolutely love that are probably going to be in my top tracks of the year. So yeah, it's nothing mind-blowing, really. It just feels like another Radiohead project, but it's done really well. Instrumentation, production is great. Tom sounds great on it. Writing's great, as always, with Tom York. And yeah. Pretty solid project. All right, we have Dragon New Warm Mountain, I Believe in You. I think that's the whole title uh, by Big Thief. Again, this is my first album I've listened to by Big Thief. This is a raw, emotional, deep um, album by Big Thief here. The writing is absolutely amazing on this album. Maybe the best songwriting on an album I've heard this year. I love the instrumentation too. It feels pretty varied. They cover a pretty wide array of genres from some lo-fi, some folk, some shoegaze. It just kind of touches base on a lot of things. But yeah, this album just feels really raw. Like, as the, the album cover kind of is, it just feels like sitting around the campfire for a lot of it. And that might not be appealing to a lot of people, but I really enjoyed it, love the songwriting. Um, it is an hour and 20 minutes, but I don't think it really suffers from that length because again, it switches up quite a bit. So yeah, this was a really great project from Big Thief. All right, and here it is. We got to put Kendrick Lamar, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers. I didn't love this project, to be honest, on a first listen, but it has grown on me so much. I can't even tell you how many times I've listened to this album. It's probably around 20 times. I'm not even kidding. A Silent Hill is probably my most listened to track of this album. If it wasn't for that Kodak feature, that'd probably be my song of the year because that hook is just so infectious. Um, there's a lot of fun hooks on this. There's a lot of deeper moments as well. Obviously, the, the album being more about grief, therapy, trauma. And it's definitely Kendrick's most introspective and personal and raw album, I would say. So there, it, diff it feels like there's been a theme this year of hip-hop artists kind of just being really introspective. Like you had Denzel Curry and now you have... Uh, Kendrick Lamar doing this as well. This is a great album. The production is pretty varied, but a lot of the sounds are really great. It's not perfect by any means, but it's it's grown on me a lot. And uh, yeah, Kendrick Lamar is probably the greatest rapper of all time, in my opinion. And I think he kind of just proved that with this album. <sighs> all right, and here it is. You probably knew this was coming. This is uh, Black Country New Roads, Ants From Up There. This is one of my favorite albums I've heard ever. Honestly, I gave this a 10 on my first listen. I think I would still have it as a 10. It is absolutely mind blowing. It's just an emotional roller coaster overall. Obviously, Isaac's departure makes it a little bit more hard hitting and sad. But even if that wasn't, if that didn't happen, this would still be just as amazing. The instrumentation is excellent. The production, the live feel of everything, Isaac's lyrics, and just the emotion in his vocals. It touches on a lot of musical genres as well, and styles, and the the, the last track is absolutely mind-blowing. The levels of emotion that it reaches, it's just a beautiful, honest, emotionally varied, musically varied project um, that feels larger than life. Definitely one of the most emotional, and like I said, one of the best albums I've heard in a very long time. I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being my album of the year because it is just absolutely mind-blowing. It's perfect from start to end. It's insane. It's insane. It's a 10 out of 10 in my eyes, even listening to it like dozens of times now. Yeah, it's fantastic. All right, that's going to do it for this video. 
those are my best and worst albums of 2022 so far. Um, there's a lot more music I gotta listen to that I'll try and get done before the end of the year so I can have a more comprehensive list at the end of the year. But yeah, this kind of gives you a taste of what I'm liking so far this year, what I'm not liking. And I just realized all the albums I hated were white hip hop artists. I know MGK makes pop punk, but he's originally a hip hop artist. So there you go. I don't, I don't know what that means, but maybe it just means white rappers are kind of trash right now. That's going to do it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your list down below. Let me know if you hate any of these picks. Let me know if you disagree, if you agree. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.